Hello everyone, it's Miss Benita. Hi, I'm here to help Miss Heather out with the last two lessons of ecosystem restoration. And of course, Claude and Ruby are here to help out as well. They've been looking forward to this. Are you ready? I am, and so are they. So the purpose of today's lesson, lesson five in the last chapter of ecosystem restoration is to consolidate and that means to bring together, to make things stronger. And here we're consolidating our understanding of the role of nutrients have in the growth of plants. Now we will work with another sim, a reading and more evidence cards in the three activities that we have planned for today. There is a packet that accompanies today's lesson, but again, if you do not have the packet, you are free to use some paper and a writing utensil. All right. So our first activity is the model using the environment sim. There are a series of questions throughout today's video and space has been provided in your packet for you to write down your thinking. If you're watching the video with a family member, you may use these questions like interview questions and take turns asking and writing down your ideas. There is also room for you to write down any questions you have for your classmates and or for your teacher. All right, let's get started. Think back to the data we collected at the last during the, our last lesson. What did we figure out about why Cercopia trees aren't growing and thriving in the soil in the project area? Okay, we've discovered how, how the soil in different places can be different. Now we'll think about how those differences can affect how plants grow and thrive. As ecologists, you'll have a chance to share what you've been learning by using a new digital app. You'll read about the growing conditions in six different environments and discuss how those conditions might affect the plant growth and health. Then you'll drag plant pictures from the toolbar into the boxes to show your ideas about whether the plants in each environment would be healthy, unhealthy, or dead. So if you have the packet, the information to access the digital tool is included on page two. If you don't have the packet, go ahead and pause the video. You might wanna take a, uh, a picture if you have a phone of the, the URL that's right here, or just a pencil and paper and copy it down. This will send you to the Amplify website and you'll need to log in. And the username is here and the password. And these are underscores. So there's a, an, an underscore between environments and model and model and ID and ID and 2729. Oh, you're right. There's also one here between five and environments. All right, let's get started. I'd like you to discuss the conditions in each environment and decide how well the plants could grow there. On the app, you can drag these pictures into the different environments. If you don't have the app and you're using your packet, you can cut the the different plant pictures out and place them in the environments. As you work with the app or the hard copy in your packet, think about this question. Which plant picture did you decide to place in each environment? And what is your, explain your thinking. Why did you put them in the different places? You can pause the video and you can work on this and I'll see you in a bit. All right, let's see if we can answer the question we've been investigating. How do nutrients in the soil help plants grow? 
What might happen to a plant if it did not have nutrients? It wouldn't grow as large and it wouldn't thrive. So how do you think the rest of the ecosystem might be affected if plants aren't growing and thriving? Well, we know that everything in the ecosystem is connected. And if one part of the ecosystem isn't growing and thriving, what do we know about the other parts of the ecosystem? All right, based on everything we've learned from observing the simulation, reading restoration case studies, and our class discussions, why do you think plants need nutrients to grow and thrive? Nutrients help plants make their food matter, which helps them grow and add to their body matter. A food matter, body matter connection. Consolidation leads us to the key concept. Plants need nutrients to help make food molecules for energy and body matter. All right, on to activity two. We'll be, we will be reading more from the book, Restoration Case Studies. So we will read two real life ecosystems uh, about them and in order to learn more about how nutrients affect plants. You can find the PDF of this book on our website. Pause the video and write down this URL. There are no spaces, just uh, periods and backslashes. And then you scroll down to fifth grade and at the end of the fifth grade unit, there's a list of the, the books and you'll wanna select restoration case studies. So I'd like you to turn to this page in your packet, reading about nutrients and ecosystems. You'll take notes here. Notes can help scientists record a lot of information about without spending lots of time writing down complete sentences, okay? I'd like you to turn to the table of contents, which you'll find on page three. Find the section about Cape Cod salt marshes, all right? Also find the section about the Alberta forest and wetlands. These are the two that we will be reading today. You'll read pages six through 11 for the Cape Cod salt marsh, and then pages 12 through 17 of the Alberta Forest and Wetlands. You'll take notes on the problems and how nutrients are part of the restoration plants. So go ahead and pause the video and um, complete this task and I'll see you in a bit. All right, let's review. Let's take a look at the, fr the first row for the Cape Cod salt marshes. We'll look at that together and then you'll take your responses for the Alberta forest and wetlands back to your classroom meetings to discuss with your classmates and your teacher. Okay, so what are the problems? Well, people catch the fish that eat the purple marsh crabs. These purple marsh crabs eat the cord grass. And with more marsh crabs, we have less cord grass because it's disappearing, being gobbled up. So we're gonna put that there. How are nutrients part of the restoration plan? Well, if we add mussels so that they can add nutrients to the soil, it'll help the cod grass grow cord grass. Cod grass, cord grass, cord grass live longer. Let the European green crabs stay since they eat the purple crabs and hopefully create some balance there in the ecosystem, right? Let's put that there. All right, if you take a look at your book, I have this spread here, this two-page spread that starts on page 10. 
we pulled from various places this information. So this is an opportunity for you to practice your reading skill strategies on obtaining information for a specific purpose. And our purpose is to answer those two questions. So when you do your last row about the Alberta forests and wetlands, keep in mind that your answer might be spread across multiple places, okay? There are a couple of questions about the Alberta forest and wetlands in your packet, but I wanna to jump to number 10. What happened to the organisms in the Alberta uh, forest and wetlands ecosystem? Some of you are saying that the trees were cut down and the sand was taken away because people started mining there. There are now toxins in the soil. The forest and wetland ecosystems are not healthy because of mining. But again, we're looking at organisms. What happened to the organisms there? Some of you are saying that the toxins in the soil made it hard for the plants and animals to live there. The decomposers were killed off and the nutrient poor soil was left behind. So based on all that we've observed, read about and investigated, what are your ideas about why plants need nutrients to grow and thrive? Make sure you bring these ideas, your responses to your next class meeting and share. All right, our last activity for today's video are, is evidence talk, and you did this in chapter one. So let's review our, uh, our plan. We had a project goal to restore and improve the health of a particular section in the Costa Rican rainforest. Uh, we investigated why the Cecropia trees aren't growing and thriving in the soil. And now we're getting ready to write an argument about why the Cecropia trees are not growing and thriving in the soil based on the evidence that we've collected. So let's do some practicing on evidence collecting. Before you write your arguments, you'll use the evidence talk routine to discuss the evidence that supports the claim. And the claim is that Cercopia trees aren't growing and thriving because there aren't enough decomposers in the soil. You'll get several pieces of evidence that could support the claim. You have seen some of the evidence before, but some of it is new data. Now, not all of the evidence supports the claim, so you're gonna to have to do some careful reading here. You'll need to decide which pieces of evidence best support the claim and create the strongest argument. Remember that evidence in a scientific argument is data and scientific ideas. These are linked together. You will need to think about how the scientific ideas and data included in this new set of evidence cards can be linked together. Now, turn to this page in your packet. If you don't have the packet, just read along with me. Notice that the question and the claim are listed here. Let's review the directions. Read the question and the claim below. The question is, why aren't the Cecropia trees growing and thriving in the soil? And the claim is, the Cecropia trees aren't growing and thriving because there are not enough decomposers in the soil. Read each evidence card carefully. You'll find these in your packet. You may want to take turns reading the cards aloud with a family member. Write important ideas below. Take notes. Talk about the evidence that supports the claim. Try to connect the related data and scientific ideas together. See if you and a family member can come to an agreement on whether the claim is supported by the evidence. If there is no disagreement, if there is no agreement, discuss the reasons why you still disagree. It's healthy to disagree, as long as you do it respectfully. So look for these cards in your packet, 
review the cards, make sure each family member gets to read all the cards and you as well if you're if you are doing this with someone else. Now I provided a tool that you can use. You use this tool back in the first chapter. It's the scientific language that will help you discuss the evidence cards together. It's good to practice doing that. All right, welcome back. If you haven't paused and worked on this, go ahead and do that now because we're going to do a little bit of review. And review is something we do after we've done some work together, right? Okay. How did you decide which cards best support the claim? There are six cards here. Some of them were a little difficult for me to decide. So I went ahead and set this up uh, so that I have everything together. My claim, the Sacopia trees aren't growing and thriving because there aren't enough decomposers in the soil. What's evidence that's strong evidence and what's evidence that's not strong? Let's look. So card one details the number of millipedes in, the, in our two study areas, the healthy and the project area. And we know that millipedes are decomposers and they are a sign of a healthy of, of healthy soil. Well, we have way more here, right? There's more than double. So does this help? Is this strong evidence to make this claim that the Cercopia trees aren't growing and thriving because there aren't enough decomposers? Well, let's put it here for now. We can always move it, right? For the next card. This idea comes from the book, Walk in the Woods. Molecules from water and air mix with other types of matter and become part of the soil. Well, this information is important, but again, is it helping us uh, explain that there are not enough decomposers in the soil? It might not, so we'll put it over here. I like about the cards, you can move them around. Next card. This is from the Ecosystems Restoration Simulation. Plants need nutrients to help them make food molecules for energy and body matter. So again, we're looking at that the plants aren't growing and thriving because there aren't enough decomposers in the soil. And we know that they need those nutrients. So this might be something that'll help us link ideas together. So let's put it over here for now. So let's take a look at this data for these three different data sets. So we have sunny days, total rainfall, and carbon dioxide in the air. So we're seeing that in the project area, we have one less uh, sunny day, we have more rain, and both the carbon dioxide and uh, in the project area and the healthy rainforest are the same. Uh, one more day of sunlight here, of, of sunniness, and less, a little bit, not as uh, much rain. You know, if you think about this rain data, in Seattle, the average rainfall for June starts out at about two inches, which is about 51 millimeters, and ends, the month of June ends with 0.2 accumulated inches, which is about five millimeters. So that's a lot, but I digress. Is this information supporting the claim? It might not be, cool as it is, we're going, to, we're going to put it over here for now. This fuzzy card here is from the Walk in the Woods. Decomposers are organisms that break down dead things into smaller pieces. Decomposers add nutrients and other matter to the soil. Again, this gives us a role of how important decomposers are. So let's put it here for now. And the last card is about the nutrients found in both of the areas. So we have low levels of nitrogen and phosphorus. These are uh, nutrients that are found in the soil. And the healthy uh, area has a lot more. Potassium is about the same, but it could be used for, as evidence that 
helps us this, uh, support our claim. All right, now you are ready to use these evidence cards to help you write your scientific argument. And at any time you can move them around if you find that they're not strong enough to support your claim. All right, it's a wrap. We looked at uh, an environment uh, tool to best describe the conditions or these conditions best helped us to decide what kind of plants uh, would thrive there. We also looked at two case studies on the impact of, uh, of humans in an ecosystem and how we can restore the nutrients in, the, in those two ecosystems. And we also are preparing to write a scientific argument. And we looked at different evidence cards to prepare ourselves for that writing assignment. That will happen in the next, in the next lesson. So that's all for today. Thank you so much for joining me and I will see you for our last lesson. Bye for now.